Calaroga Shark Media. From Washington, D.C., where nuclear warming isn't really a thing, this is Ballot. That's right. And Hold On, I'm Coming is just an Isaac Hayes song, not a punchline to a dirty joke. What's wrong with you and your dirty mind? Let's hit this. Well, I guessed right in not staying up late to cover Trump and Musk and just going with the J.D. Vance and drag jokes yesterday. So what did these two talk about? Immigration, union busting, and how America needs a leader who can strike fear into other countries. Because nothing says make America great again like terrifying the rest of the world, right? The whole thing started an hour late. Musk blamed it on a massive cyber attack. Because when your live stream doesn't work, it's obviously a cyber attack. Not the fact that you're trying to run a tech platform like it's a startup in your mom's basement. But don't worry, once they got started, they really tackled the big issues. Like how migrant crime is supposedly destroying cities like New York and San Francisco. Which is funny, because the only thing that's really destroying those cities are the rents. And in New York, someone keeps building really ugly buildings and putting his name on them. Then Trump decided to drop this gem. Drill, baby, drill. Right in front of Elon, the guy who makes electric cars. It's like telling your vegan friend that you're starting a new steakhouse. Awkward. But at least no one's starving. Musk, ever the pragmatist, pointed out that if we stopped using oil and gas overnight, the economy would collapse faster than a house of cards in a hurricane. We'd all be starving, he said. Which is the kind of upbeat message you expect from a guy who also wants us to colonize Mars. Then there was the bit about nuclear warming, which left everyone scratching their heads. Trump said people don't talk enough about it, which might be because it's not a thing. Nuclear power? Sure, that's a hot topic, literally and figuratively, but nuclear warming sounds like something cooked up in a comic book villain's lair. And let's not forget the technical glitches. You'd think after the disaster with Ron DeSantis' announcement, Musk would have figured out how to run a live stream. But no, it was like watching two boomers try to figure out Zoom for the first time. Eventually, they got the thing running. But by then, even the bots had lost interest. Score 100 points if you handed in J.D. Vance and Drag and went to bed early. Of course, Trump didn't miss the chance to blow his own horn, congratulating Musk on getting 60 to 70 million listeners, which is a great number, if it were real. In reality, about a million people tuned in. But hey, what's a little exaggeration between friends? What else does Trump claim is six or seven, but is really one? Donald Trump is back at it again, this time throwing what he might think is a compliment Kamala Harris's way by calling her a beautiful woman. But let's be real, it's less about flattery and more about reducing her to her looks. A classic move from the guy who's built a significant chunk of his public persona on objectifying women. Remember, this is the same Trump who shrugged off bragging about groping women as locker room talk back in 2016, a scandal that nearly sank his campaign. Trump can't resist the urge to toss out insults like bitch behind closed doors, as reported by the New York Times. Publicly, he's tried to paint her as someone who turned black for political gain, a bizarre accusation that J.D. Vance attempted to clarify with some chameleon talk, whatever that means. Kellyanne Conway, Trump's former campaign manager and master of spinning gold out of whatever he's tweeting, has finally drawn a line in the sand. She's urging Trump to stop with the personal attacks on Kamala Harris, especially when it comes to her identity. Yes, the woman who helped coin the term alternative facts is now pushing for fewer insults, more insights from the former president. It's like asking a dog to stop chasing cars. Good luck with that. Conway isn't alone in this. Even Trump's old buddy Lindsey Graham is waving a caution flag, saying that the issue with Harris isn't her heritage, it's her judgment which is pretty rich coming from a guy who's been riding the Trump train through every wild twist and turn. But here's the kicker. Despite all these warnings, Trump has a history of doubling down when told to back off. So while his recent posts have been more focused on Harris's policies, it's hard to believe that we've seen the last of his identity-based digs. After all, this is the man who turned Sleepy Joe and Nasty Woman into household nicknames. If there's one thing we can count on, it's that Trump will eventually return to what he does best, stirring the pot, consequences be damned.
Seth Meyers joked about Trump floundering in Ohio, where J.D. Vance is a senator. Next, we're going to find out he's losing to Kamala among voters who live at Mar-a-Lago. Jon Stewart said Donald Trump is telling American not to elect a liar. He's like the Michael Jordan of lying. Or, as Trump would say it, the Willie Brown of lying. Trump is in hot water over his music choices. And this time he's managed to tick off the family of R&B legend Isaac Hayes by playing Hold On I'm Coming at his campaign rallies without permission. Now, before you start thinking Trump's just trying to get a new playlist going, let's be clear. This isn't the first time he's been caught red-handed with someone else's tunes. Isaac Hayes, the man behind the soulful hit, is no longer with us. But his family is very much alive and kicking, and they are kicking back. They're demanding Trump cough up a cool $3 million for the 134 times he's allegedly blasted the song without so much as a, may I? This isn't just a slap on the wrist. It's a full-on legal smackdown. The Hayes estate wants Trump to stop using the song, take down any videos where it's playing, and publicly admit that they did not, in any way, authorize his use of the track. Isaac Hayes, the legend's son, not to be confused with Isaac Hayes, the legend, took to social media and did not hold back. He basically said that Trump is the epitome of everything that lacks class and integrity, highlighting not just the unauthorized use of the music, but also Trump's history of, well, being Trump, complete with sexual abuse allegations and racist remarks. Hayes III made it clear that they're ready to take swift action to make sure their dad's music doesn't become the unofficial anthem for Trump's campaign. And Trump's campaign response? Well, there isn't one. It seems they're playing the, if we ignore it, maybe it'll go away card. But hey, at this point, they're probably just updating their do not play list. I mean, even Celine Dion told them to knock it off with my heart will go on. And let's be real. Was that song really the vibe they were going for? Trump rallies and Titanic anthems? Did nobody think that through? Portions of today's show were made with the help of AI, but apparently not the AI that writes funny material. The AI left me hanging today. Should I make up a quick RFK story to try to save this thing? In a recent interview, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. made headlines by claiming that the Loch Ness Monster is actually a mutated dolphin created by the U.S. government during a secret Cold War experiment. According to Kennedy, the project, codenamed Operation Aquatic Enigma, was intended to develop a super-intelligent marine creature capable of spying on Soviet submarines. Kennedy insisted that the creature somehow escaped and found refuge in Scotland's Loch Ness, where it's been living ever since. He even suggested that the recent spike in Nessie sightings is due to the creature becoming bolder in its old age, possibly seeking out human contact after decades of isolation. I probably made that story up, but then again, between dead bears and brainworms, you're really not sure, are you?